we learned how to run the processing toolbox to solve a complex workflow. But what if you wanted to run this on multiple inputs? Let's learn how each of the tools in the toolbox can be run on multiple inputs. So let's start on the section two, batch processing. We'll do this exercise on clipping multiple layers. From a data package, we have this project. Go ahead and open this project called batch processing. It should load a bunch of layers in your QGIS. Make sure you load the one from your data package and not the solutions folder. So the batch processing, I will load this. Let me explain the problem. Here I have five layers, which are country-wide layers. So I have a layer for places, rivers, roads, lakes, and other areas. This data comes from Natural Earth, which is a nice data source for global scale mapping. So it's open source data set. And I have all this data. Somebody tells me that I want the data for a particular state. So I want to clip this data for this one state. So go ahead and clip all of these layers to this one state. And if you are a beginner QGIS user, you say, I know how to do this. I want to clip these urban areas. I will run the clip tool. I will select the urban areas. I will overlay the state boundary and run this. And I have my clipped urban areas layer. And you'll do this five times. And then at the end, you'll have the five clip layers. What if somebody gave you a hundred layers? You'll have to do this hundred times. So now you are an advanced QGIS user. Let's learn. Once you've figured out how to run the tool on one data, can we run it on all the data? So all the inputs from a folder or a bunch of input layers that we have. So now let's select the places layer and I'm going to search for the tool that I want to run. So we want to run this clip tool. Instead of double clicking, I'm going to right click and I see a second option. Every tool in the toolbox, including models and the plugin algorithms, everything can be run as a batch process. So now if you say I've run this tool on one input, I want to run this on multiple inputs, you can always right click the tool and select this option, execute as a batch process. This opens up this batch processing configuration dialog. This dialog is the same for all the tools. The way it is configured is each row in the dialog represents one operation. Each column is an input. So remember the clip tool that we had has two inputs and one output. So I need to configure what's the input layer, what's the overlay layer, and what's the output layer. So in the batch processing, I need to have three columns, input layer, overlay layer, and clip layer. And here, once I configure it, I'll get five rows, one for each input, and I can generate this all at a time. Let's learn how to do this first. So here we have the input layer. I want to run this on all these five different inputs I have. So here I have this autofill box. I'm going to click drop down. And I can choose to load all the layers I want to run either from directory. So let's say I have a folder full of 100 files. I can just load all 100 from there. Since I have already opened this in QGIS, I can just say select from open layers. I can say I want to clip lakes, places we already have. So I'm going to skip that one, rivers, roads, and urban areas. So I'll select the remaining four layers, which I want to clip. And I click OK. And it has autofilled this here and is added one row per input. So when I run this, it'll be five different operations, which will be run at a time. If I had 100 files in a folder, it'll just create those 100 rows. Second, overlay layer. How do you want to clip it? So I say, I want to clip it with the state boundaries. But now I want to configure the same for all the inputs. So instead of selecting manually, I can say autofill, fill down. And this will just fill the same thing down. So if you're one configuration of remain the same, you can just use fill down. Lastly, I want to have the output here. But remember, the output file will be not the same name. I, if I want to name it clipped, it should be clipped places. The second one should be clipped lakes. The third should be clipped rivers and so on. So in the three dots here, when, I, when it's asking me where to save the file, you can select the folder and give the name. This name is not <clears> the full <throat> name. It's just the prefix of the layer. So we just clipped underscore. The later half will fill it automatically. So the first half of the file name will be clipped underscore. The file will be a geo package. And I click OK. It asks me for autofill. You can say autofill it with parameter values. And parameter is the input layer. So whatever is the name of the input layer, the later half of the file name would come from the input layer. And when I click OK, you'll see that now my dialog is automatically configured 
that is going to save this as flip places, flip lakes, flip rivers, and so on. And finally, I can click this button, load layers on completion, and click run. So try this out. Configure your batch processing dialog. The way I've configured it should have you know, one row for each input. The overlay layer should be the same. The autofill, you can go and name the autofill layer as clipped underscore and autofill it with the input layer. Once you have this, make sure you click this uh, checkbox, load layers on completion and click run. Let's run this and you can see it's executed five commands at a single time once I configured it. And once it's done, you should see five new layers in your layers panel. So now you can see I we had started with the national layers and now we have state level clip layers executed. And this option is available on all the tools. So if you have some tools from a plugin, you can also right click and execute that as a batch process. So that means every tool that you have in the toolbox can be run on multiple inputs. It is also available on the model. So if you built a model and you want to run that model on different inputs, model can also be run as a batch process. So again, you can, everything that is exist in the processing toolbox can be run in this batch processing interface. What we did, we clipped the five years, that's great, but we ended up with five geo packages, one geo package for each input. That's not what we want. A geo package can have multiple layers within it. It'd be much easier to manage just one geo package. So fortunately, QGS provides a really nice tool. Again, I use it all the time. It is called package layers. So go and search for this tool in the toolbox called package layers. This tool is will take a bunch of layers. So I'm going to select all the layers with the clipped at the beginning. So all the clipped ones, and you say, write all of this into a single geo package. So I'm going to now save it to a file, and I'm going to name the output as clipped.geo package. So this will be just clipped.geo package. And we'll have all of those layers packaged within that. A geo package can also store other ancillary information alongside the data. So you have options, save layer styles. If you style your layer in some color, that means that information will also go along with the layer in the geo package. That means the next QGIS user loads that layer will be rendered in the same color. So you can save your labels and style and everything inside that as well. Same with metadata, you have layer metadata, it'll also go in the geo package. So go and run this. We select all the clipped layers and package into a single geo package called clip.geo package. And as I run the tool, you see my tool is packaging all my layers into a single geo package. And now if I go to my data package, I would see that there is a clip geo package exist with all the five layers inside of it. So now I have a single file with five layers that are packaged inside of that. So if somebody sent you hundred files to clip, you send them a geo package with all the hundred clip files. And then this all process can be done using the batch process. So try out, go and package all your clip layers into the single geo package. Use this method when even if you have layers scattered all over your file system and say, I want to now manage them better, put them in a single geo package. And once you have it, that means you have a single file that you can back up and manage and you don't have to worry about different files. I want to show you since we've been using geo package, one of the things that you'll notice is when you have a geo package, you'll sometimes see those two extra files, dash WAL and dash SHM. These files are files that are contain the memory buffer. So if you have edited the geo package, all the edits which are not saved in the file, they're contained in this file. Also, they are log files. That means if you're using geo package, it prevents other users from modifying that. So these files are kind of temporary files that will be there only when you have the file open. See what happens when I just start, have a new project. So I'm going to close the project. And as soon as I close the project, all those files are gone. The SHM and WL files, right? So they're just temporary buffers. So if you're, when you're backing up, make sure you don't back those up. They just have kind of the log files that are along with that. So whenever you open a file, so if I open this file, you'll see that suddenly I see the sidecar files. And so 
this is what those are. They are not to be, they don't contain data. They just are there for log files. So now we could package everything into a single geo package and you can ship that and people will have access to that. All right, you can use the checkpoint one from the solutions. You can load the batch processing checkpoint one project and you'll see all the clip layers. And we'll do a challenge now where you get to practice the batch processing interface on a different tool. 